as they are not okay when someone is missing someone is absent yes they will say things as they are are not okay when someone is missing someone is absent there is coming a day when the bridegroom is taken away hey folks radio preacher man for shelf reliance these are hard times and it could get harder you've seen the droughts you've seen the floods nationwide worldwide even so 7 billion people got to eat, so you don't be left out with nothing to eat. Get yourself some vittles put back on the shelf. Now, I got a product I want to tell you about. It's called Shelf Reliance, and this is good food. You can use it on a regular basis, get you some dehydrated food, and you got some easy prep meats. They got vegetables and fruits dehydrated, ready to eat as a snack, or you can reconstitute them for your cooking needs. You can get grains, bread, milk, eggs. It's a full line of food products, even dessert such as ice cream and fudge brownies. Hello. So check it out at radiopreacherman.shelfreliance.com. That's radiopreacherman.shelfreliance.com. It's also a wonderful uh, business opportunity for those of you looking to, uh, to do something with your lives uh, on the side or instead of being unemployed or whatever your situation is, brothers and sisters. guys, this is Mo. Welcome to Revelations Per Minute, the RPM Radio Preacher Man Show. Um, I'm filling in for Brian. As you know, I do this on Thursdays, but I got two of my favorite guests on, so I'm cool. I'm real cool tonight. Cool as a breeze. Um, but the world's not cool as a breeze, as we know. Um, I got Mr. John Price, who wrote um, The End of America. I'm showing the book right now. And then Dr. Joy Jeffries. Now, I got to tell Joy that she's on at 7 and not 6. So, Troy, can you bring her on so I may tell her? Troy. Oh. Oh, okay. Is John Price here? Oh, okay. Well, then, um, geez, John said he'd be here. I hope I didn't mix up the... Oh, boy. I hope John's on it. No, it says on blogtalkradio.com, Radio Preacher Man, John's on at 6, and Joy's on at 7. Yeah. So I'm going to... Um, what I'll do right fast is email John and tell him to give us a call in. Jay Price. Guys, I'm sorry for this. This happens. Call in now. You are on at 6 Eastern. 661. If anybody else wants to talk to me, I know you guys probably don't, 
But if you want to, give me a call at 661-449-9924. That's 661-449-9924. Hey, didn't we have a marvelous show last night with Mr. Stu Webb? Hey, um, I wish I was at home when we did it. We were driving, actually. And um, I wish I was at home because he's just got an awesome website and... Oh, boy, I wish I, I could have been at home to also do him on voiceofamerica.org or, or because he's got a show over there. But I wasn't home, so we couldn't do it. Boy, we've been just running around Florida. We've been evangelizing, guys. And um, it's funny, we have a Jewish, a really good friend, a Jewish realtor, and she is Jewish, and she's been driving us around, and we've been praying, and, you know, we hold hands, and we pray, Lord, help us, and Jesus, help us, and she's learning, and actually, the other day, when we found something we kind of liked, um, I said, I kind of like it, and she said, hallelujah, so I said, you're getting there, and um, she laughed, it, she, we don't push anything on anybody. We do it in a loving way, and we're just showing her the love of God through our marriage and through us. And I didn't even swear in front of her, so that's been real good um, for me because sometimes I'll swear once in a while. But I held back, and we've been just acting really Christian, and we've been preaching the Word of God. We read in the back seat. She drives us around. And we read in the back seat. I have my little book of John with me. And we read out loud. And in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And things like that. And it's just awesome that we're evangelizing to a Jew. I think that's neat. Because, you know, Brian and I love the Jewish people, as you know. Um, we went over to Israel, even. And stayed on the kibbutz um, in June and July of this year. And we were supposed to stay there for about two to three months. But um, uh, I'll be honest, my body kind of gave out. And it was awful, just awful, our living conditions. I'm not putting down the kibbutz because people live like that. We are. We must take a look at our, and John will talk about that if he calls in. Um, we are kind of spoiled as Americans. We have cars and beds and furniture, rugs, books, lamps, candles, drinking water, computers, mi- mirrors, everything. And when you um, go to foreign countries, uh, they live differently than we do. Let me tell you, especially on the kibbutz, it was rough. We stayed in a, um, on the kibbutz. Our bed was made in 1939, and that's nasty. Ugh. And they only had one bed thing. It was just a little tiny bed with, a, like, the springs. They didn't have a mattress. This is how they sleep there. And um, they must get used to it or something. But everybody was relatively healthy who lives on the kibbutz because they eat healthy, they make their own food. And in the, in the desert of the Negev Desert, um, God has blessed them with an underground well, a deep well, and underground aquifer, whatever you call them. And so they dug way down, and they bring in the water through that. And But if their electricity goes out, um, I know they have a backup plan to bring up that water. I know they do, because it's Israel, so they have to have a backup plan. They can't let all those people in the desert die, like, without water. I mean, because everybody who lives there, they don't have bottled water there. They drink out of cups. I'm telling you, it's a different way of life. They don't have stores like we have in Israel. I mean, in Jerusalem, yes. But when you go start going out to the country, no. They don't have McDonald's. They don't have stores. They don't have gas stations. We saw a lot of Army movement when we were there, a lot of Army movement. And the gas stations that we would stop in, when I say gas stations, I mean they have gas that you can pump. 
near the kibbutz, you know, a little gas, quote, station. But that's all it is. It's, when you go in, you can't get fountain drinks or iced tea or a, a cup of coffee. Gosh, I was, ugh, a cup of coffee. You don't get those kind of things. So um, we have just been so blessed in America to be able, most of us, to be able to go down the street and get whatever we want to eat go to the store, get what we uh, want to eat, and um, boy, with what I hear is going on, and after I heard Steve Quell last night on the Hagman's, I just don't know anymore. You live day by day, and that's all we can do. We're not promised tomorrow now, are we? So I'm going to get in the chat room. I'm going to here in a minute. I'm cleaning um, up his Yucky fingerprints. Now, tonight I'm left with my woman Bible because you took the big Bible. So, um, it's an NIV, which I don't like. I'm going to try to find another King James version. We have like 30 Bibles around here. It's just it's in a different room. So, I get it during break at 7. I get my King James version. So, um, anyway... I wish our guest was here because I didn't have anything planned to talk about. But uh, I guess we can talk about God. Or if anybody wants to go on at 661-449-9924, I'll get in the chat room right quick. I'm going to be losing um, viewers because I'm not I'm not doing well right now. So, But last night I did bomb. That was a bomb. So it was really funny when Brian was driving and Stu Webb was on, and he Brian had to be really, really quiet because, you know, and he's sitting right next to me, and, and the phone picks up Brian's voice. And so he had to be really quiet when he was driving. Usually he talks a lot to me and asks me to watch the road and to watch the exits and things like that. But we made it home okay. We made it home around midnight, did a lot of laundry. Brian passed out as soon as we got home, and um, I stayed up until about 5 or 6, just, just you know, doing laundry and things like that, getting um, prepared for today, and uh, then he had to turn around and go back, so, to Orlando, so I don't mind saying where he's at or anything, it doesn't bother me, I'm not going to be all secretive or anything, I mean... You guys know the radio preacher man. You should know a little. We're not going to have no secrets in here. So well, you're part of our family, we feel, and we're going to share what we're doing with our lives. Um, here's some people. We've got seven people in here. Hi, seven people in here. I got Cuban. That's one. And I got Chrissy. That's one. Thank you, Chrissy. She's still in here. And Joe from Maine, and uh, so hey, shout out to you, Rom, I don't know if he's in here, she is in here, but I am here, so if I can type, so I think what I might want to do is read the book of John, and uh, continue our study in the book of John, hey, is this the first time that we're in the chat room? And it's me. Oh, I probably have to log in and all that junk. Oh, no, it says go ahead. Well, I pressed I am here, and it's not going through. So anyway, um, do you guys want to talk about anything? What? What would you say? Okay, I'm sorry. I did, that was just some background noise. Um, so, yeah, I had two callers, and they'll both probably now end up calling at 7. That is awful. That is just awful. It's hard sometimes. This is what you go through with the show. Um, I mean, you know, we have good guests on. I get most of my guests through True News, and then I become friends with them because I we email back and forth and everything. So um, I'm good friends with John. There we go. It worked. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we say that a lot. We say thank you, Jesus, in front of our realtor. And um, <laughs> she's 
the first couple times, she's like, what? Well, you guys, you know, it's just a habit. We just say thank you, Jesus, for little things. Hello, Chrissy. Chrissy, I'm Emma. I had John Price and Joy Jeffries Pugh scheduled at 1 at 6 and 1 at 7, and they okay. <coughs> but um, then I emailed Joy and told her to come on at 7, and John, uh, he must have thought it was 7 uh, o'clock too, so it's just me here until 7. Now we're going to have two guests at 7. I feel awful. I feel just awful. That's awful to do to people. Um, anyway, if you want to call in, you can, 661-449-9924. You can talk about whatever you want to. Um, yeah, Chrissy, uh oh If anybody wants to call in, if Blue's listening, call on in, Blue. I could use you right in about now. But I think we, we could go into the word of John if you want to. I was just talking a little bit about I was just talking a little bit about what we've been doing in, um in the last twenty Hello. Minutes. Hey John. Hello, this is this, this is John Price. How are you? Hi, John Price. I got your book. I'm holding it up to the camera. Um The End of America by John Price. Not a real pretty title now, is it guys? But it's the truth. This book <laughs> We've had John on several times. He's a friend of ours um, inside the show. I mean, he's been a guest, but he's also been a, a dear friend to help Brian and me decide on uh, our lives. So, anyway, he's got some great information. His his site is endofamericabook.com. Endofamericabook.com. If you guys want to take a look-see over there, um, he's got some really, really great stuff and a couple videos and frequently uh, asked questions. He's got a sample chapter news, which we'll talk about, and, uh, and then you can order his book. You just can order it there, go to Amazon, and we actually have two or three copies because we lost it. Well, he sent us a free copy. I think he might have signed it. And then we lost it. We thought we saw it. And uh, we took it to Israel with us, and so we got nervous because he was going to be a guest on again, so we bought another one. But then we found the original, so we got like two or three copies of his book. So anyway, John, thank you for coming on tonight. This is Mo. The uh, sorry that I was doing my That's fine. Uh, techni technically speaking, but now here we are. So how are you, uh, Monique? Uh, oh, crazy, crazy, crazy. You know, Brian's at training right now in Orlando. He's got to do that right. chapter at the hospital. And um, uh -huh. it's awesome. You know? And uh, it really looks good when you, well, you need it to get a job as a chaplain in, in the veterans uh, hospitals. So that's what he's doing right now. And it lasts 11 weeks, so he'll be done by the end of um December and he'll be back on Thursdays. So anyway, yeah, we've been uh, deciding, making des big decisions in life, and um, deciding whether to flee America, stay in America. Um, fleeing is kind of hard because you know you got insurance that you got to deal with, and you got banks, and you've got. Uh, you know, if you have precious metals and things like that, you know, that you don't want TSA to look through. or So um, there's things that you've got to really prepare for if you're going to move overseas. You've got to find friends That's maybe. True. That through. you got to start working hard. But um, you guys can email me at any time, Monique Bogus at Hotmail.com, and I have a ton of information about moving overseas or go to John's site, Mr. Price's site, and you can talk to him. He's the, he's really the expert. So anyway, yeah, we've been working on moving out of the country and mo we're looking on moving in the country somewhere. You know, so we've been making huge decisions because the the stuff's hitting the fan. It looks like over there. Um, so go ahead, John. Tell me what you find. 
Now, let me tell you what's on my mind. Um, we had some people come down here today to Central America to visit us from the central part of, of the United States. And they said, what do you think? And I said, well, it's two words. And I stopped for a minute and I said, it's really three words because the first word is a contraction of two words. And it's over. Oh, my God. I-T apostrophe S is the contraction of it is. And then over, it's over. And let me tell you why I say that, because I am not a negative person. I'm a very positive person. I'm also not a conspiracy person. I, I try to look at the facts the way they are. But the reality of life is that God is no fool. He will not put up with people flaunting themselves in his faith and ignoring his word, particularly after he's blessed them as much as he's blessed the United States. And as the watchman decided in uh, uh, March April, and April, yeah, um, it's it's over. We we really don't have any more of a um, mission in the United States. What we have found in Central America is we started a new church. We started a new couples Bible study. On Saturday morning, my wife goes in and meets with the little kids in the park and gives them. Uh, rice and beans, and I want to come back to that because there's a miracle story attached to that. And she's discipling women here, and wow. all kinds of great spiritual things are happening in Central America. But I'll be, I'll be frank, um, in the last few years in the U.S., I didn't see that kind of thing happening. I didn't see much interest in spiritual matters. It just seemed like everybody was doing their own thing and waiting for the next big election, but we couldn't vote our way out of this problem. But let me come back to the rice and beans, because this is a great story. God is still in the miracle business. One of the young men who came on Saturday morning at the inner city park here in this little country that we're in um, came in, and his mom picked him up, and they give each little kid as they're leaving the park a little bag of beans, a little bag of rice. Not too big, but, you know, enough to have a meal. And so the kid took him, took him home, and the next day, his mom woke up and she said, look, son, she said, we don't have any money, I'm out of money, we don't have any food, as you can tell. And he said, well, mom, the rice and beans. And she said, okay, all right, well, that'll make a meal for us. So she made up the rice and the beans, and they ate it, but there was some left over, so they put it in the refrigerator. And then on Monday, she opened the refrigerator and took it out, and it was the same amount. So they ate more rice and beans. And the next day, Tuesday, she took it out. It was the same amount, rice and beans. So on the following Saturday, after eating the same rice and beans from these two little bags for the entire week for two people, the woman walked up to the people there, and she said, what do you put in the rice and beans so that it never goes away, that it continues no matter how much of it we eat? And they said, ah, well, uh, that's God, because uh, we don't put anything in it. We just give you a little bag of rice and beans. So that's just a little illustration of the fact that God is still in the miracle business. And I'll give you another really quick one. Uh, One of the Costa Rican women walked up to the pastor's wife, and she said, I have trouble keeping my job because I can't see out of my left eye. Would you pray for my left eye? Well, the pastor's wife is a good wife and a good pastor's wife, and she didn't have a lot of faith about it because she's not too much into that kind of thing. But she said, okay, sure, fine. So she put her hand on her head, and she prayed for her, and didn't think too much more about it because, you know, she did her duty. She prayed. Uh, The following week, she came back, and she said, I just want to thank you so much. And she said, for what, honey? And she said, well, you know, you prayed for my eye, and now I see out of both of I can't hardly tell this story without cracking up. Now I see out of both of my eyes the same. Now, you know, that's God at work here in Central America with people who really believe in him and who really are interested in following him. And unfortunately, the United States decided in the most recent election they had no interest in him. They'd rather vote 52% of the Catholics, 24% of the evangelicals for a man who's the most pro-abortion president we've ever had in the history of the country. So when I said it's over, I'm very serious. And people really need to look into Scripture, because Scripture gives 223 verses written by five prophets in both the Old and the New Testament, uh, telling us that the United States is the daughter of Babylon, Babylon the Great, 
they want to know more, you gave the website at the beginning, inofamericabook.com, for 99 cents. They can download it on Kindle and, and read it, and then they can decide. I'm not here to sell anybody on anything. What I'm here to do as a watchman is to say, check it out. Read the scriptures and decide what you believe. Wow. So there are, hey, that miracle story sounds like when uh, that widow, you know the the story better than I do in the Bible, yeah. when he, the widow fed right. the prophet and, and she had enough to make it through the seven years yeah. of throughout and all that or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Wow. Very similar story. Very similar. And things like that are happening in the world. Unfortunately. They are. I don't hear I don't hear stories like that from the United States because most Americans have been inoculated um, against the gospel. And, and truly not inoculated. And inoculated. Yeah. And vaccinated. Yeah. So, you That's know, right. in the dust and stuff I'm telling you, right. we've been looking, we've been making some outside, we've been making some friends and um, somewhere. And um, I'll tell you what, John, they're, they're, they're blind. They're blind. Yeah. They're actually That's wanting true. to they sell houses still. I mean, they're, I mean, oh, yeah. they, we're looking at houses somewhere, and they're they're blind. I mean, it's oh my God, they are so blind. So I think what God did back in um, June, May, June, July, He's starting to really separate, really separate now the believers and the followers from the non-believers and the fake Christians. I think he's really starting to separate us, John. We have to make some huge decisions quick, like... That's true. I heard a very sad story today. As a matter of fact, I've still not gotten over the story, and I may never get over the story. The people that came down to see us today from the United States told us about their church, and I've been to that church I've been to a couple of funeral services there. I've been to a worship service there. It's a very solid evangelical church. And if you were to go in there, you would say, terrific, what a great church. They told us today that half of their pastoral staff, and and I should have asked, I don't know how many that is. I don't know if that's five people or 20 people, but it's a pretty big church. Half of their staff voted for the aborter in chief they voted for a man who's not only a marxist but he's also pro-abortion and has taken the position that the catholic church can't deny birth control even though it's against the religion i don't have to say anything more about that but you get the idea but one half of their pastoral staff the people that should be standing in the pulpit and preaching and saying Let's do the right thing, folks. Let's turn back to God. We need to repent. Instead of that, they're voting for the evil. Half of them did. Now, that's really scary, because when God's church turns away from God, what does that tell you? Yeah, I know. We've also been visiting churches lately. Um, for real, we've been, We Brian said, but I think we need to get back to church, partly because of... Um, Every job interview that he goes on, and uh, you know, for chaplainship or for whatever, you know, kind of spiritual job, they ask what church he belongs to. And we quit going four years ago because our church is like that. It's very evangelical, very Pentecostal, hands in the air. We love Jesus and stuff. But about three or four years ago is when Brian and I woke up because something happened to us to make us wake up two things happened actually and it had involved the government interfering with our lives and it was it's, so you know we all wake up differently you know I've always been a, I've been a Christian forever and Brian's been a Christian since he was 15 but um, we really really woke up because we got affected directly and our church would not help support us and this involves Masonic, Luciferian, lawyers and judges, etc., in the court system here where we live. It's all Masonic. We have five Masonic temples in this um, what uh, city that we live in, John. And the church would not support us. 
And actually, I made flyers to hand out because I wanted a lot of people to help show up at the courthouse to support me. And um, it was a legal issue, but I didn't get in jail or anything. It wasn't, I did not violate a law, um, but it was a legal issue. And my, my pastor said, do not pass out those flyers. You know why? Because the judges and the lawyers go to that church. And he wants to keep the ties coming in from the judges and lawyers and the bigwigs instead of doing the right thing and helping the flock of the church fight the evil people in the government. Fight this government. Fight at the city state. You know, he should be, our pastors should be help fighting against their municipalities and, and the taxations that's going to start occurring really bad. Oh, my. In January, when Obamascare really takes action, oh, John, John, the middle class is going to be destroyed. I mean, and food prices up here are skyrocketing fuel, you know, because of all the stuff that's going on in Israel and overseas right now. So anyway, yes, we lived through a similar situation as the story that you were told. Um, my Our own pastor of four, five years, five years, and we even went through the leadership classes and stuff, and Brian was a choir boy. So we were heavily involved in the church, and the pastor took the side of the Luciferians. I quit going. I said, that's it. We quit tithing, and I quit going, and that was that. So we started going recently again to, like, Assembly of God churches and Pentecostal churches. No, they're still not preaching it. Still today, you just walk out feeling good and that everything's great and God is good and he is good. But that's not what they need to be preaching right now. They need to be preaching about preparing. They need to be preaching about the, the rapture or anti-rapture. They need to be preaching about you know, things of this and signs repentance. of repentance. Repentance would be a good place to start. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, repentance. Now, I want to ask you, why do you think America is a daughter of Babylon? What's I'm really happen? glad you asked that question. What's and for 99 cents, people can go to endofamericabook.com and download uh, the book, which is called The End of America, as you would know. And Go ahead. Uh oh. Go ahead. Cutting out. Troy, he's cutting out. Troy, he's cutting out. Troy. Cutting out, John. I would say call back in. He's going to have to call back in. Can you hear me? Can anybody hear me, guys? Troy, can you hear me? I might have to do this the old-fashioned way. Okay, there you go. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, John. Why do you think uh, America is the daughter of Babylon? There are 223 verses in the Bible in both the Old and the New Testament, written by five different prophets, who are describing they? and telling us who the daughter of Babylon, Babylon the Great, is. And those 30 clues that are contained in those verses only be applied to the United States of America. I wish there was some way that we could make it apply to France or Italy or uh, the Roman Catholic Church or the financial system or somebody else. If anybody else would be nice, but... It doesn't work. When you look at the 30 clues, and I highly recommend to people that they um, go to endofamericabook.com and for 99 cents download the book on Kindle and read it, or if they don't have Kindle, uh, they can go on Amazon and buy it for not very much money and read it. 
um, and the, the point that I'm trying to make is that God loves us, and that's why he told us ahead of time what was going to happen to this rich, powerful, influential country described in these clues as the hammer of the whole earth, the great voice, a center of world commerce, um, a, a nation with a large number of Jewish population, of which there are only two in the world, us and Israel. Uh, I could go on and on. The 30 clues are very descriptive of the United States, but they're not descriptive of any other country. I wish they applied to France or Italy or some other country, but they don't. And I've had tons of email from people since the book came out saying, you know what? God has been telling me the same thing as I read scripture and I read about the daughter of Babylon, Babylon the Great. I've concluded it only could apply to the United States. And because of that, a lot of people have fled. A lot of people are thinking about fleeing, and they should, because the Bible says that the righteous and the prudent see the danger coming and they flee from it. So for people who are listening who don't know anything about what I'm talking about, they should read the book, read scripture, read the verses applying to the daughter of Babylon and Babylon the Great, and see that when somebody says to you, I don't think America's in scripture, they're wrong. The word America, of course, is not there for obvious reasons, uh, though God could have done that. He, he gave us the name of Cyrus and Josiah before they were even born, mm -hmm. but he chose not to name the country, but he did describe the country, rich, powerful, living in luxury, um, very militarily powerful on many waters, quite a country, amazing country. And the reason this country goes down and is destroyed is because it stabs Israel in the back and betrays Israel, contrary to its written agreement with them, when Israel cries out and says, help us, help us, come help us, and we refuse to do it. This president is the first one in our lifetime who would do that. I mean, Nixon would have never done that. Reagan would have never done it. Even Clinton would have never done it. We have a president now that we just reelected who will not stand by Israel, and I think that'll be very tragic for our country. Yeah, I think um, today, actually, there were some uh, earthquakes on the New Madrid Fault line, actually. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Um, if you go to Hummingbird027 on YouTube, um, just type it, you know, go to YouTube.com and type in Hummingbird027. She gives update news, kind of like Rick Wiles, but she does it via showing you slides and whatnot. Today was the first day that there's been major, ma major like four point and five point. That's kind of high, you know, on a New Madrid fault line on in like Tennessee and some some states are there, where there haven't been. And there was an earthquake today also, or yesterday, in Iran that killed eight. Of course, we don't hear about any of this on the media news. Um, your, your TV should be thrown out the window, for real. Just give them all away. No more TV. It's not even, it's all Luciferian. So, um, but wasn't, I'm going to ask you a tricky question. Wasn't Babylon already, and of course, you know I agree with you. Okay, you know I do. But I'm going to play the devil's advocate. Wasn't, like, Babylon already gone and done with, don't you think? Or, you know, it's already happened. It's already been fulfilled, that prophecy and all that. Oh, did I lose him again? Dang! He's calling from a foreign country, so that might be a problem. That is a problem. All right. Well, I'll go on. There are nine separate uh, warnings to flee from the prophet of Jeremiah, along with Zechariah, Isaiah, and Apostle John. They gave nine specific warnings to God's people to flee the daughter of Babylon. Wow, he's back. Okie dokie. With your, with your radio system. Okay, there you go, John. You're back. I am so oh, darn sorry. Okay, I brought that's you back right. in. Um, we got until 7, so that's cool. But didn't it already happen? I'm playing devil's advocate. Uh-huh. 
didn't the uh, destruction of uh, Babylon happen? Well, let's talk about that for a minute. Uh, the destruction of Babylon, the original Babylon on the Euphrates River, uh, took place over a very long period of time after Alexander the Great uh, took it. Um, but it never was on many waters. It never had any Jewish population at all, no, no. which disqualifies it from being the daughter of Babylon. Uh, in addition to which, if I'm going to do something to a country, I'll name the country. I won't call it the daughter of anything. I, I'd say Babylon. There are some Bible writers today, and I just don't agree with them, who say that they think that all these verses tell us that someday, out of the ruins of Babylon, which are two piles of rubble and old bricks right now, that there yeah. will arise the hammer of the whole earth, the great voice, the center of world commerce, the center of the second largest Jewish population in the world, etc. I don't think so. Uh, you can get in you can be killed if you're a Jewish person in, in Iran or Iraq today. So um, wow. people who have incorrectly identified the two piles of rubble where Babylon used to be and who mislead people to say, oh, don't worry about it. The United States is safe. It's not a problem. Those verses don't apply to us. But they're way away, far away. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, otherwise, why would you call it the daughter of Babylon? That just Right. Make sense. Right, I agree oh. with you, John. So where are we in terms of what people should do? Yeah. God tells us nine times in his word, seven times addressed to Christians, two times addressed to Jewish people, that they should flee. And the word flee that's used can only be subject to one interpretation, and it means flee. It means to run. Run. Yeah. And and that's the only way you can describe it, because that's what it means. It's always interpreted that way, to flee or to run. And it says one of the reasons to do that is so you don't participate in her sins. Yes. Uh, I mean, so think about how many people in the United States who voted for an administration that wants to kill babies, that wants to deny religious liberties to the Catholic Church and to other Christians, how can they look out in the face someday and say, well, I knew all those things, but I just didn't want to, I just thought he was a very nice man, or I liked his family, or I liked his oh program. Uh, I mean, there's no possible way you can justify voting for evil. Exactly. And that's what happened. And that's why I said at the beginning of our interview this evening, it's over. And the watchman who gathered Back in April, concluded it was over. We concluded that God had said to each one of us, uh, it's time to go on and find something else to do, another ministry, uh, most likely out of the country, because Americans have no interest in the gospel. So go to a country where they're interested in the gospel. And it's been fascinating to us to come, we've only been here a couple months now, but to come to a Central wow. American country where they really do have an interest in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we don't have to be concerned that the government in this country is going to try to shut us down or tell us we can't do it or, or make some kind of goofy order that we have to violate our religious beliefs. I mean, that's just, that doesn't happen uh, outside the U.S. It's only in the U.S. that the government thinks that they are strong enough, powerful enough, and um, may I say wicked enough to tell... Um, the Catholic Church on the matters of, of uh, birth control and uh, oh, no. there, are verses, there are verses in the Bible that say that in the daughter of Babylon Babylon the Great, that before it's destroyed yes. there will be there will be ruler against ruler, violence in the streets like lion cubs growling, there'll be bloodshed and there will be strangers coming into God's sanctuary, into his churches so for all those churches that wow no the gospel or they can they can preach uh, the feel good gospel or they can preach uh, don't bother yeah. us gospel yeah uh, eventually they're going to find that there's a problem because people are going to walk in there who are strangers who will be from the government hi I'm from the government I'm here to help you who are going to come in and shut them down because they'll say you are preaching hate speech um. And one other point, last Friday, 
the United States Supreme Court voted in private in their own conference session to decide whether or not they would take up any of the same-sex marriage cases, of which there are eight of them. Oh, my God. Now, we don't know, of course, until they announce what the result is, but anybody who looked at what happened on the Obamacare vote, which was five to four, even though the key vote there was appointed by a Republican president, uh, would have to conclude that we are going to have mandated same-sex marriage from the top, from the Supreme Court, the same way they did abortion uh, within the next uh, 12 months. Another reason for punishment, because Jesus said in the book of Luke that the last days would be like the days a lot. Well, what were the days a lot like? The days a lot. Uh, we know from Scripture, were uh, men running all over town, violating other men. Uh, just a sick situation, but oh that's God. exactly where we're headed. That's where we're headed. Oh, my God. You know what? And I'm even... Oh, my... You know what? And Oh, my God. And Oh, my God, this is sick, but I'm going to say it. You know, they made bestiality legal again in the military. That was a law that was passed. Because you know how Steve talks, Steve Cloud talks about um, the cloning and the genetic modifications and all that and how they're making, the chi- I think they're called chimeras or chimeras. And there was even a, a movie out about it. It was a, a top-selling movie. It was a, ha- it, they had a baby and this couple had a baby, and it turned into, it was this animal-like thing with this big tail, but it was very, but it had a human kind of face. It was beautiful, though, beautiful, but it was, it wasn't, re- uh, and it was a popular movie. I can't remember the name of it, but you know how the, the Luciferians always tell you what they're going to do in the movies and in TV shows and stuff like that, you know? I mean, there was a popular show called Survivor, like three or four years ago, where you had to live on an island and beat everybody else in order to survive. But, um, yeah, it's getting really bad. So if they're making bestiality, homosexuality legal, the the God can't stand that stench. That stench of those kind of sins are just sickening, John. That's just not right. Yeah. Well, you're I mean, right. You're absolutely correct. They're, they're all, and they're playing with the weather modification. You know how we had a drought last year, and we lost 80% of our droughts. We still have Fritos, Doritos, and all that on the shelves. It's all for show. It's for show. Yeah. Because we don't have any corn syrup really left. I don't know how they're making it now. But we lo- we did lose 8% of our crops, and this year we're going to lose 80% again, or 90 even this time. You know it. Um, you well, know, don't God, you wonder how? Don't you ever wonder, Monique? What does God have to do to get our attention? I mean, exactly. Look at all the things that have happened. I mean, what does He have to do? What is? I mean, I'm sure that there are some people that think, "Oh, these people are completely crazy." The weather has nothing to do with God, really. Is that right? Well, mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I can't hear him. He can't hear me. There you go. I can hear you. What does the weather have to do with it? Boy, they don't like this show. It's not our radio station. Cuban! Cuban! Ah! One more time. Call in, John. We got ten minutes. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you the things that say to flee from America, because Brian and I really take this seriously. Let's go to Jeremiah 50, verse 8. Flee out of Babylon, leave the land of of the Babylonians, and as giants and goats leave the flock. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's start again. Jeremiah 50, verse 8. Flee out of Babylon. Leave the land of the Babylonians, and like the goats that lead the flock. Jeremiah 50, verse 16. Let everyone flee to his own land. Jeremiah 50, verse 16. 
Here's Jeremiah 51, verse 6. Flee from Babylon. Run for your lives. Run for your lives. Do not be destroyed because of her sins. It's time that the Lord's vengeance, he will pay her what she deserves. Yes, indeed. And John just mentioned how they're voting in secret and things like that. And they have made bestiality legal again. And it's just disgusting how they've done that. And I don't know who this one is. I don't know if that's him or not. I'll bring it over. Hey, John? Is this you? No, not John. Sorry. John, not you? John, not you? I'm Hello? sorry. Sorry, are you just a listener? That's me, yeah. Okay, you're a listener. I'm sorry. Let me Let's talk to him and see what he wants to ask. Okay, go yeah, ahead. Is that you, Brian? No, this is John Price, who wrote End of America. Go ahead. What you need? Okay. Yeah, I was wondering if, um, you know, in Matthew, or, yeah, in uh, Matthew uh, 1340, Jesus says exactly what's going to happen at the end of the world. You know, I, uh, I don't understand where everybody's fleeing the country and going to Babylon when he says that he shall send his angels and uh, uh, gather up. Uh, like, as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be at the end of the world. The Son of Man shall send his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all that offend and them which do iniquity, and cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth, and then the righteous shall shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. And that's Jesus talking right there. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's believing the U.S. thinking they're going to Babylon. The, the United States is Babylon, and what they're doing is fleeing the United States because it is the daughter of Babylon. But Jesus didn't for you know his parables are written you know so they can be interpreted, but prophecy is written so everybody can understand according to the Bible and. Jesus plainly writes that at the end there, uh, he's going to send his angels and pluck out all the evil and let the mm -hmm. children That's at the very, conflict. very end. Yes, I agree with you, and that will happen at the very, very end. But there are a number of things that will happen between now and then, unfortunately. I wish it was all happy, clappy, and tomorrow morning we all get raptured and the angels come pick us up, but it unfortunately doesn't happen that way. And according to Scripture, of the 223 verses by five prophets, there will be a destruction, a great destruction, of the daughter of Babylon, which will happen at the end when it stabs Israel in the back. Um, unfortunate, unfortunate truth. Hmm. Is that in Revelation? It's throughout the Bible. Um, in in my book called The End of America, uh, which you can get for 99 cents on endofamericabook.com, um, I describe the 30 clues that he gives, written by five prophets in both the Old and the New Testament, describing a rich, powerful, influential country that in the end has violence, and people coming into the churches and bloodshed, and then that country stabs Israel in the back, betrays it. Israel cries out and says, come help us, come help us. We're the only country in the world that has a peace agreement or a defense agreement with Israel. Right. We won't do it. We betray them, and because of that, the country is destroyed. I wish it was a happier message, but I believe the message, which is why I have myself and our family have moved outside of the United States and we are in contact with a lot of people that have um, because they also believe that we've turned our back on God and we will eventually, because of what we do to Israel, be destroyed because of it. So, caller, you're thinking that we're going to be, like, protected by angels and, um, like, plucked out and things like that? Is that it? Is that kind well, of I'm not thinking it. That's what, what Jesus, Jesus said in said. Uh, Matthew, and that refers it back into Revelation chapter 3, verse 12, and 3, verse 21, and 
uh, Revelation 21, verse 7, where God encompasses all of the previous uh, things that Jesus spoke of in the beginning of Revelation, where, um, you know, that verse is, if you cross, I got a lot of cross-references in the Bibles I use there that refers, you know, one scripture back to the previous scriptures, and that's what it all interrelates to. Yeah. Hey, well, re- well, I think... That- go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, go. I was just going to say you can't. You can't. It's it's bad interpretation to say that everything that was ever said all interrelates and makes one single point. You have to take all scripture together because it says in scripture that no scripture is a private interpretation. You have to look at all of it. And where people right. get in trouble no is when they try to take oh, one right. out. There's no what. There's no the uh, prof. It says prophecy is uh, needs interpretation, or no prophecy does not need interpretation. It's spoken plainly. That's at the end of John, and um, um, I think that's true. Yeah, like Jesus spoke in parables, and stuff, but this one, but this parable is speak, spoken plainly, and then the Book of Revelation. It's a mixture of stuff that is spoken plainly, but then other stuff that is not spoken plainly, like the seven horned beasts and, you know, mm-hmm. eyes all yes, around. That, 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 there's that a lot of symbolism. It's true. I, I agree with that. What I would suggest that the caller do is to Google or go into Bible Gateway or one of the search engines and just put in there, Daughter of Babylon or Babylon the Great, and you'll come up with about over 200 verses, about 223 verses. Look at those verses, because there are 30 clues contained within those verses. And then look at each of them and say, could this clue possibly apply to any other country except the United States? And I I wish I could tell you, yeah, there are seven or eight that are for Italy, eight or ten for France. None of them apply to any other country except for us. Um, oh, if it says Babylon in the Bible, I'm pretty sure it means Babylon, doesn't it? You know, over... That, that's, uh, how, how about the daughter of... What do you, if that's true, let's assume that your statement is true, then what do you do with the phrase, the daughter of Babylon? That could be referred all the way back to the first Eve spoken of in the Bible, where there's two accounts of Eve, you know, there's a, Adam's first, you know, he created uh, oh, them. Well. Um, we're, we're, we're not going to agree if you're not willing to look at the actual words because you just said Babylon means, well, when I said what does daughter of Babylon mean, you said it means something else. So we're not going to, because you have to take by the Bible as it's written, not the way you hope it's written. Correct. So look hey, it up. Um, look at the daughter of Babylon and look at the Bible on the great and then make your own conclusion as to whether any other country could possibly be referenced by those 30 clues, because I think you'll ultimately agree that it can only apply to our country, and I'm very sad to say that. I wish it was somebody else, but I don't think it is. Hmm. His book really does lay it out. And, Caller, do you believe in the rapture, too? Actually, nowhere in the Bible does it use the word rapture, does it? No. No. Which chapter? I, I've tried to find it, but I, because yeah. you know, I, I in Matthew, uh, what did I say, thirteen forty, there where Jesus said that the, you know how the, such the end of the world. There, it doesn't say anything about God's people getting raptured out of the world, but it says that the evil people and all of their evil stuff will be plucked up from the angels that Jesus sends, according to in the book of Revelation, where he's uh, talking to the seven angels of the seven churches, and they take and pluck all the evil people of Satan, which actually goes back to uh, Matthew uh, 37, and, you know, it actually, you know, it, I got it right here, but um, <clears throat> where he explains to his disciples the parable is, yeah, Matthew 13, verse 37, all the way up to, like, 1343 there, but um, uh, he says that he will, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels and they'll gather up all of his, out of all of his kingdom, all the things that offend. 
So that doesn't include, and it doesn't say anything about a rapture there, but it says that all the evil will be pulled out of the earth and God's children will shine forth like the sun. Where does that fit in, John? No, it's um, in Matthew. What, what, what the reader is talking about are things that will happen in the future. What I'm talking about are things that happened well, before those matters. Um, clearly, clearly before the rapture, clearly before tribulation, clearly before the return of Christ, these verses that describe the destruction of the daughter of Babylon take place. Uh, a number of people have looked at this question. What, they, they say, wait a minute, how could America, the most powerful, richest nation in the world, not be in the Bible? Where are they? Well, we're there but we are described as the daughter of Babylon, Babylon the Great, not as the word America, uh, but for people who really want to know where we are, all they have to do is look at those 30 clues, and then they'll come to the same conclusion that a lot of people have come to. Unfortunately, I wish it wasn't true, that we are, in fact, the daughter of Babylon. And when they do that, then they'll have to recognize that the other verses that describe the daughter of Babylon and tell you what to do in response to it are pretty tough verses. I mean, let's face it, fleeing your own country is not the most pleasant experience in the world, but there are nine times in Scripture, seven for Christian people, twice for Jewish people, that we're told to flee and not participate in the sins of the daughter of Babylon. So this is the kind of thing that could go on for two or three hours, and I know you're up against a, a time bump here, Monique, but it's been good to talk to you and good to talk to your guest, and I would just suggest to him that he look into it because he sounds like a man with an inquiring mind, and yeah. I think when he does, he'll, uh, he'll arrive at that conclusion. Yes, call or right, get his book. It's 99 cents. You can download it for 99 cents, and it's great. It's a really, re uh, I'm not lying. I'm not promote. I don't promote things like that, but, you know, all the time. It's a good book. End of Amer The End of America by Do John Price. And uh, you can go to his site, too, endofamericabook.com. So... Okay, keep an open mind. Th thank you okay, for calling in and keep an open mind. Say hello to Brian. Thank you. See you hey, Brian John. Me. All right. We love yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank love you. you. Love you. All right. God. Bye bye. Bye bye. See, you. See you, caller. Okay. All I'm right. Gonna... See you later. Okay, caller. Love you. I'm going to take yeah, a break. Hey. hey, cool. Hey, I'm... Oh, go Is ahead. Brian no, he's not here tonight. I'm doing it. Oh, okay, well, yeah, I'm, I, I see him all the time. I used to go to your old church and stuff. You spoke with my mom, um, and that's how I found out you guys are online and all that. So I'd like oh, to talk to him. Oh, you uh, are him. We need to talk Damn, to yeah. you. Oh, yeah. awesome. We Hey, um, my email, or listen, you need to get a hold of Brian. We want you on our show. We want you on our yeah, show. I, um, yeah, I... Because I've got a lot of revelation I'd like to share. It was enough to get me kicked out of church and all this stuff. So, <laughs> did you get did you Just, get kicked out? Oh yeah. <clears throat> See, the, in Revelation it says, you know, uh, if anybody adds to the words of this book, they shall add to their plagues and take away, and they'll be taken away from you know the book of life and all that. Or not the book of life, but um, you know, the, just the difference in the King James version, which is 400 years old, and then the the New Living Translation that they used, they added so, and they changed the singular I, you know, I will do this and that, to we all, and, he, and it includes everybody. So that's it. not adding just one thing; it's adding you know the whole world instead of I or he, you know, as singulars, and you know that's what uh, kind of flew him for a loop, I guess, but. Um, yeah, I'd like to uh, talk with Ryan there. Um, you say you have an email, or I can give you my phone number? Or? Yeah, l let me give you my email. Okay, it's go ahead. Monique Bogus, M O N I Q U E B, like boy, A U G, like God, U S, at hotmail.com. Monique Bogus at hotmail dot com, and and any of you callers out there who need prayer or whatever, you need help, you have questions. That's email to email too. Brian never announces it, but it's Monique Bogus at hotmail dot com. Email me for real. Did you really get kicked out of 
our church. Well, hey, you know, Dustin kind of pushed me out, and then, uh, oh, you know, geez. all I was doing is repeating what the Bible said, and then, you know, out of the King James, and it contradicts what's in the New Living Translation, and that's why they got all flustered, and... Oh, my God. It wasn't, it wasn't my words, it was not my interpretation, it was just reading word for word, and I read from the King James, and then he... First, he read from his version, and I said, oh, no, that's not right. And then I said, go to the King James, because they pride themselves on uh, reproving, improving, you know, at the King James level. And uh, he was kind of floored there, because it does, you know, add so much, you know, and, and that's strictly forbidden by the own, by the word of the yes. Bible. So, oh, I um, agree with you. That was, that's what happened was, to me and Brian. We kind of got kicked out of, you know, that church. Because the the teaching, you know, Brian was in choir, and we took that leader, those leadership classes they offer. I'm not knocking any. Tr- I'm mm-hmm. not, yes, I am knocking the church. I'm sorry, I am. I, I and I saw my pastor at the gun shop the other day. Um, he did not even invite us back. He didn't even ask about the show. He didn't even, Mm. we told him about the show, which is our ministry, two hours a day, and we have on awesome guests, but um, I'll tell you what, it's, it, I believe that, that church has been taken over by the Masons and by the Luciferians, I truly do. Oh, yeah, they call it the synagogues of Satan in Revelation there. Yeah. Which uh, synagogue is just a place of worship, and that's all there were back then, so, you know, a synagogue is a church, and a church in Hebrew means uh, gathering to talk, not a building, you know. But, um, yeah, oh, you, yeah, I, I, I go back uh, 10, 12 years with uh, the evil people that you just mentioned there. With begins with the M there. Uh, they, uh, I, I, I got a lot of knowledge of their evil and a lot of knowledge of the good revealed by God, and you put the two together, you got the knowledge of good and evil, and they know Wow. That. I no, loved I that church too, man. I loved that church, but and and my small group was awesome. But um, the pre- preaching got watered down. Just got watered down. He'd hop around in circles and say, "Yeah, the rapture's coming any minute," you know. And I said to to the to L, you know L. Uh, I won't say the name. Starts with the name. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mm-hmm. said, "Do you know what time it is?" And then um, he said, "Yeah." And I said, "Do you really know? Do you really know what time it is?" And he said, "Yeah." And I said, "Then why don't you preach on it?" This was four years ago when Obama first got elected, and um, he he kind of pushed us out. We weren't kind well, of walking I- back. I was I, I started going to that church well that uh, <laughs> place um, what, in 2008 and in 2009 he did about uh, three or four months study every Wednesday night on the Book of Revelation and I was yeah. at every class with every syllabus and everything and uh, yes. I used his own words and we went too were, we went too we yep. saw you there. I used his own words, and he denied he used his own words, which I wrote down in my syllabus with the references, the, the scripture. He's changing. You know, revelant. The church is changing. Oh, it, <laughs> to say the least, yeah. Wow, I'm so glad that we weren't the only ones. And, you know, when they remodeled it and made it stadium seating, that was it. Nah, I couldn't deal with that. Yeah, when you when you spend I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars to expand your church and you know only add a hundred and twenty some seats or maybe a hundred and fifty seats yeah. somewhere around there. That's all that added there. And you know the churches that I've been to through the years, ever since I was five years old, you know if you got standing room and where there's no standing room and stuff, then they you know add the church. But you know the church wasn't even half filled and exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, exactly. Email me and I'll have Brian call you. For real. I should. Well, good talking with you. Talk to you later. Hey, I love you. 
I love you a love lot, you man. Too. Thanks for everything. <laughs> Keep listening. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. We'll try. Uh, talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Hey, Joy, are you on? Dr. Joy? Yes. How are you tonight? Hey. Oh, my, my girl. Hey, guys, this is uh, um, Dr. Joy Jeffries Pugh, P-U-G-H. You can go, oh, oh, I'm so happy. Doc, I, I can jump up and down. DrJoy.com. Doctor is not spelled out. D-R-J-O-Y-E.com. You've got to go to her music ses- ses- section. You, they make you cry. Her songs are written by her. She does all of the, all. She, this lady's like a Mensa. All, she started saying prophecy when she was like, Five. She's really, she's real smart, and she did all of the, all of the instruments herself. So like she'd go in and do the drums, and then she'd have on a headset and listen to the music, and she then she put in the you know the piano and the organ, and uh, she does. How many instruments do you do? <laughs> there's there's a good number. <laughs> it would take all day probably just to go through every little list of the things that I did for that album. Even everything, including the knocking on the door, <laughs> is me actually knocking on the door. So everything in there I either participated in or played. <laughs> that is awesome. She actually has a song, Knocking on the Door, and she actually knocked on the door. I mean, that's crazy. This lady, uh, and she's written, how many books have you written? What are your books? Titles. Well, I've written uh, uh, Colors of Joy, and then I've, I've written uh, Antichrist, the Coned Image of Jesus Christ, and then Eden, the Knowledge of Good and Evil. And, of course, that's on uh, a regular book, or you can get it on CD or download it or put it on your Kindle, ha- however you want to really review that particular book. And then I have my album that's Before Time Stops. you got to get that album. And uh, my first edits uh, for three new books that will come out after the first of the year. Oh, you're crazy. You're, this lady's crazy, but um, listen. Why well, I want to ask her about talk to her about tonight, if you don't mind, because I've been watching your YouTube stuff on this. Is who the Antichrist is? Oh, uh, that's always interesting to most people is to figure out uh, who the person is that's walking this earth that really fulfills the prophecies of really the book of. The entire book of the Bible, really, because I tie things from the Garden of Eden all the way to the end of time to prove who the person will be. Sure, this lady's crazy. I mean it. Okay, so go on. You want to? Um, you want me to shut up and you just take the floor and tell us about the bloodlines and about who he is, et cetera, et cetera. Well, unless you'd like to ask some questions specifically, sometimes it's it's fun for you to kind of bounce questions off of me and let me kind of, you know, uh, answer those questions. So just whatever you want to do tonight will be fine with me. Okay, go ahead. You start talking about the Antichrist, and I'll give you questions from the chat room. And, guys, you can call in and talk to Dr. Joy Jeffries, P-U-G-H-P-U, 661-449-9924. Um, call on in if you want to ask ask her if you um, have any questions about really about anything she does it from the beginning to the end this lady's crazy so okay <laughs> Joy tell us who you think and why you think the, who the Antichrist is walking the earth today well the thing that when I started doing this research about oh gosh now over 40 years ago It uh, came to me that it was very interesting that the book of Revelation specifically says that, uh, you know, those who are wise will be able to count the number of the beast and that the number is the number of a man. And, uh, you know, so, so... so much of the research that I've read, it's, it's tried to make it into something other than a man. And specifically, the Bible does tell us that it is a man. So it, it's definitely a man. And then the other thing that was interesting to me, because I truly believed I was going to see this man come to power because of, the, like you said, the prophetic dream that I had when I was about six years of age, in which I really do believe that I saw what would be the end of time and that Jesus was there. And when I was confronted uh, with the thought process that I may live to see the end of the age, it became an obsession for myself to really understand, well, who will this person be and how will I identify him so I will know who he is and be aware of what's going on around me to know that it's the season because the Bible does tell us that we may not know the day or the hour 
That's very significant, the day or the hour. It does not say that you won't know the month or the season. So I have always believed through my research that I could be able to pinpoint pretty much the day as far as the season was concerned and possibly even the year because it doesn't say you will not know the year. It says the day or the hour. And so I set out to look through the Bible along with a lot of other uh, outside sources to see if I could find out who that person might be. And when I first started this process, there was things like, for example, Ronald Wilson Reagan had six letters in his name. He was It was 666, and there was a lot of people who immediately attribute Ronald Reagan to having some connection to 666. And then, of course, my next thing uh, after I got out of college that I began to um, have questions about was um, uh, Gorbachev, who was uh, in Russia because he had a specific red blood mark on his head, and he appeared yep. to be marked. And so he came out with a book called Perestroika, and I was fascinated by the fact of what he was trying to bring forth uh, in Perestroika. But what it was, that these people were laying the foundation and groundwork for what would become a, a, a massive move toward one world order. And if you remember back, Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan both, when they came together in, in front of the United Nations, they specifically... Uh, were concerned about the fact that if an alien species were to infiltrate our skies, that we'd find out that we would all grow together as a human race to fight off these offending characters and that we wouldn't have the separation of unity um, that we presently have across the United States. Well, because these people were laying the foundation and groundwork for this, then along came George Bush. And, of course, the first George Bush who became the president, of course, was Ronald Reagan's vice president, he was the first person to establish the thousand points of light. And he was the first person to actually come out and say, in words, new world order. Order. And when you did the research on him, you found that he was connected very much to something that was called the skull and bones and the Illuminati, the yep. people who typically are very um, in the top echelon, let's say, of secret societies who dictate to the world as to how the world is going to be uh, brought together in a unified uh, one world government, one world uh, economic order, and one world religion. And so in looking at all of these aspects of what that meant, when I put my first book together, I wanted to know, could I figure out who this Antichrist was going to be and how would he come about using that background of information that I had gained over many years of doing this research and how it would really start to come to pass in, in, in my own uh, generation in my own lifetime. And so when I went back and I looked at the scriptures, especially in Revelation, where John, the revelator, is talking on the Isle of Patmos about the image, he describes it in the Greek, and he uses the word icon. And, and looking at that, that did not mean, like a lot of people have said, well, it'll be a computer, it'll be a statue. What he was actually saying is this being an iconic image and this is very unusual because this time that he uses this word in Revelation is never used in any other part of the Bible. So it's very significant. And looking at that, I was like, okay, so there's going to be this strange image that apparently is a man. How could you be an image and how could you be a man? And how could you be an iconic image? What kind of icon? We think about icons. You know, I looked that up and went through a lot of stuff, and I was like, you know, icon. How could you be an icon? So you'd have to be a famous person. Well, who... Who could be the most famous person that would uh, that somebody could emulate and pretend to be? And I kept going back to the scriptures, especially in Thessalonians, where it said that this image or this being would walk into the temple of God and proclaim himself as God. In other words, he was going to be not only in the temple or rebuilt temple maybe of God in Jerusalem, but he was actually going to be in God's temple, meaning yeah. that he was going to be in his flesh. And so um, back when I did my first research for my first book, I was uh, contemplating these thoughts, all these things you know, that had come to pass that I had brought to the table to myself because at that point in time I had not planned to write a book. It was just for me to know who this person was going to be, much like, like the priest that plays the part in The uh, in the Omen, which was a movie that was just... Um, it, it, it left a mark on me because I felt very connected to the priest who was trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together and identify who the Antichrist would be. So I really related to that through the years of trying to just 
pick up pieces of this and read this. And I mean, I would go back and read all kinds of things I could get my hands on. In fact, books that don't even exist out there that you can get your hands on anymore. And because I had this huge library and I had just been putting these pieces of this puzzle together, it dawned on me one day that because I had actually seen the Strata of Turin in a, in a magazine that my father had brought and showed to me when I was really a young girl, probably sometime around the 60s, late 60s, early 70s, and may have been as late as, as like maybe 76, uh, 77, 78. But it was during a time probably when they were doing a lot of research on the Strata of Turin. And, uh, and I'm not sure whether it was a look magazine or a life magazine that he brought into the house, but when he showed me the picture, I immediately was stunned by it because it reminded me of this image of this man that I had seen in, in, in actually in my, uh, in my dream as a child. And I had seen that and known that that was Jesus. I knew that it was Jesus. And so when I saw the Stratotoran image, I immediately said, oh my gosh, it's Jesus. You know, I've seen him before. I, that is him. And so I immediately took that um, shroud as being very real, not being something that was fake or forged or some medieval painting. And so from that point on, I had um, really not kind of, kind of dismissed that from my mind until I was doing some research into cloning. And, and cloning at the point of time that I was doing the research, which was back in the late 80s and, and early part of the 90s, that was actually at that point in time as far as known um, uh, not if you weren't underground, you didn't really understand the process of it. But if you were just doing the the uh, evaluation of it from a scientific standpoint, people were very much criticizing it, saying it would never be done. That it was um, science fiction. It was a part of, let's say, a, a Star Trek movie, and that was all that it could ever be. But I had come across some information that had been held under secret society uh, situations in which. Our buddy Hitler was uh, already cloning some things and doing some investigation into the genetic structure of the Hebrew, the true Hebrew, the pure Hebrew, the pure Israelite, and that's not a Jew. This is talking about pure remnant coming all the way that had come from uh, actually Adam and Eve through their son Seth and on through Noah, of course, on to Jesus Christ, and then uh, uh, from the lineage of David on to our present generation. There was 12,000 of the 12 tribes that were mentioned to be having 144,000 at the end of days that would still be pure. In other words, they were considered virgins because they had never mixed. They actually are uh, true Israelites. And so because of this, I knew that this blood was still in existence in our generation because those people would be alive as the 144,000. So immediately I began to see that the persons that, that you know Hitler was killing off uh, according to the Holocaust records, were those people who were actually true Hebrews and, and not Jews. And the Jews, who were the Khazar Jews, which are the... Uh, wow! He was letting go, and he was letting them establish the, uh, the, the Israel. In other words, they established yes. Israel. They took over the Promised Land, away from God's people. So that led me yeah. to understand yeah. that <clears throat> he was already trying to identify you know, what it was to be Jewish. And in doing that, he had a great love for all the the artifacts. In other words, he wanted the pieces of the cross. He he got a hold of the spear of, the, of destiny, which yes. is a spear that actually pierced Jesus' side, which would have had still blood stains on it if it had been maintained. And at the same time, he was very interested in the shroud. Now, now people will say, well, he never got his hands on the shroud, but I'm going to tell you that they'll say that the Vatican kept it from him. The Vatican was involved with Hitler. And my research shows that it was very involved with Hitler. Right. So what was it about exactly. the shroud that, that Hitler? wanted. We know that Hitler, his whole, his whole desire, and Men Kampf, in his book, when he wrote it, he really, really wanted to be able to develop the Aryan race. That was not the race of God. It was the race that he could establish and get rid of the race of God. And he was attempting to do that, yeah. no different than the Bolshevik revelation where you saw the, the, the Jews you know, were kind of let go, but yet the Christians and the true Hebrews were actually killed in that case as well. And, and, and actually, many more numbers than the true Holocaust was, but, you know, your Jewish people don't have, do that because they use that to kind of hide behind, especially with their ACL, ACLU kinds of things. So when you come to the truth and wow. the knowledge of this kind of thing, it makes you realize that there was something very significant about the Holy Blood. And I was doing some research on especially the uh, Arthurian legends of Greek, uh, I mean, of, uh, of the Holy Grail and King Arthur. And what I found out was that this particular, these stories got their really agenda from going back and looking at what the Templars would use and participating with, uh, unfortunately, with the Vatican, which people don't want to really get a grip on, along with the Jesuits and even the Muslims, 
who, uh, whose Prophet Muhammad was created by the Catholic Church. Now, people don't want to agree with that, but it was, in fact, that it way. Was. And when you find out that all these people were connected to one another, and they had an agenda to get rid of the commoners like you and I, and allow us to be ruled by the blue blood serpents that have been with us since the days of Cain, when he was birthed by Eve through the serpent, you get a real the grip as to these two lineages are, upon this earth. Are you saying the serpent and Eve had sex? Oh, it did, yes. There is no doubt. My research shows this. We are in the shadow of a doubt. They are the tears. We are the wheat. So he, she didn't take a, a freaking bite of an apple, okay? That's right. Example. You know, I I really had to look at that, Monique. I mean, it was one of those kinds of things where I had to I had to strip away the false uh, teachings that had been given to us. And there's nothing wrong with te- teaching a child a Bible story, but you've got to be able after the Bible story to lay the foundation of truth upon people. Because if you don't base your understanding of the Garden of Eden on true foundation, then you do not understand the book of Revelation. To understand the book of Revelation, you've got to know what really happened in Eden. And if you don't grasp that and you keep throwing that out and not coming to terms with it, you can never understand who Babylon is, who the Bahur of Babylon is, why the Antichrist is who he is. You cannot get a grip around that. Right. And when I really began to see that Hitler, you know, his father, you know, the, uh, many have tried to say, well, it's not true that his father was not... Uh, you know, a bastard son of, um, you know, of of Rothschild. And, right. and when you go back and you do the research on it, you can understand why he really was that, because he was letting the Khazar Jews go. They're all uh, Khazarian, and that's where the Nazi, Nazi, uh, uh, Askinini Jews came from. They used the N-A-Z-I, Nazi, as a part of that. But yet, you know, our history books don't teach us this. These are things that have been held... Uh, underground, it's been held in secret societies to keep the truth from the commoners, from letting us really know what has been going on. And so, when all this was really brought to me to, you know, to grasp and try to put the pieces of the puzzle together, immediately I, I said, isn't it, it wouldn't be nice if, you know, if we could bring back, because of cloning, who would we choose? And one day I was taking my, my grandmother to a doctor's appointment, we were in my little Jeep. And um, I said to her, I said, you know, if you could bring back anybody, um, who would you bring back if you could clone them? And I explained to her what cloning would be because cloning would be an identical copy, not a twin, but an identical copy of the person that would be brought back to life. And she immediately said her mother because her mother had passed away when she was a child. (laughs) And I said, no, Mommy, if you could just bring back somebody really important that could change everything. And she kind of sat there uh, looking at me, and then I was like, Oh, my gracious, and I pulled off the side of the road, and she says, what's wrong, Joy? And I said, you know, I thought the best person you could bring back would be Jesus, but what if you brought him back and he was a clone, then he would not have a spirit within him. Right. And she was just standing there, sitting there looking at me in the car, and I'm just like, I I was excited to think about the possibility of bringing Jesus back. But imagine him coming back and walking the earth and healing the people. I mean, cloning literally proves that the person is the same. They're identical copy of their original. In other words, if you and I take a skin cell off of us and we hollow out a a female egg and we pop our skin cell in there, we place it inside of a woman and Uh she delivers us in nine months, she's not going to, in other words, it's going to be you or I. In other words, it's not going to be anything in regard to her. So I had been so excited about the possibility that cloning may be able to do something of that nature. I had not even dreamed I had answered my own question as to how the Antichrist would come to power because at that moment I realized that a clone is an image. Yes. Oh, yes. And so the fact that it was an image without a soul went carried me back and explained to me in Genesis 1 where it talks about the male and female that God created in his image. God being the Trinity, Jesus being the person, the persona of which the image was created in. That first male and female did not have a soul. They were like pre-Adamites. They were actually put on the earth and told to replenish the earth. Only until God created Adam 
Yes. Then you blow into him a breath of life and place him in the Garden of Eden, where there only there was he was he tempted by this tree of knowledge, and from him he guarded and brought Eve out of his same flesh because there was nothing else that matched him. In other words, there was nothing else out there that had a soul. And before the 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 serpent shows up to entice Eve and beguile her. God marries Adam and Eve, yet they are not naive. They are, they are not. They're pure. They don't know a thing about sex. Right. There's nothing been told to them by God, which is the Lord God at this point, does not say to them, you know, go out and replenish the earth. He's not told them because they're too naive. They're too young. And so I'm thinking, you know, what is the thing in life that removes our innocence from us? It is the moment we come to the terms about the birds and the bees. And it seems to me that when the serpent showed up, until that time, they were running around naked. They had no ashamedness. They were married. But they had not been told to go out and replenish or do anything of that nature, be fruitful and multiply. That had not even been told to them. So when the serpent shows up, he starts, you know, his thing, he'd oh, if you eat of my fruit, you're not going to surely die. You know, you're not going to die, this, that, and the other. But Eve eats with him, and she turns around, and she eats with her husband. And they've been told by God, don't even, you know, God has told Adam. He didn't tell Eve, told Adam, stay away from the tree. Don't even touch it. And what we find is we only, we only got a little more than touching and, and, and going on here. It's no different than if you and I were told by our parents, don't touch the hot stove. If you touch the hot stove, I'm, you know, I'm going to punish you for it. Well, you know, being kids like you can be, they walk out of the room and you don't know what a hot stove is. Uh-huh. You've never seen a hot stove. It's, it's burning and it looks like it's kind of warm. And you're kind of like, well, I wonder what that feels like. And you reach over and you pop your hand down that stove. Well, what do you get? You get a really burned hand. And you start screaming and try to run and hide because you don't want your well, parents to know yes. what you've done. And then they come in, and there you've got the burnt hand. They're like, I told you not to do that. Now, you're yes. going to get punished, and you're going to get this, this, and this, and go to your room. You can't do this. But what happens is it doesn't take away what happened. we got a burned hand. So when Adam and Eve did what they did, they got burned. They lost their innocence. They had gone against the will and the commandment of you know the Lord God not to do that kind of stuff. So what did they do? But run out, and they sewed fig leaves together. Now yep. you know that's a that's a that's a weird thing. I <laughs> use this example over and over that if I had eaten, like for example, if I had eaten cookies that my mother told me not to eat, when she walked in, I didn't have so, you know fig leaves sewed on my <laughs> private parts. I put my hand over my mouth because I didn't want her to see me chewing the cookie. So at the same time, I'm like, what is this? God always does an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. So you got to look at it that when God rendered his judgment upon them, he went after you know Eve and the serpent, and he cursed the serpent's seed. Yeah. All through the Bible, the word seed means his lineage. Exactly. And you got... It says the seed of the woman, you have to understand, Eve came out of Adam. Right. So Adam and Eve's flesh is their seed. They're the flesh of their kind. And everything in Scripture tells you that God, when he made something good, he made a male and a female. He told them to replenish the earth, to make seed after their kind. Yes. So it meant that the seed of the serpent was always going to have a hatred against the seed of man. Yes. And what happens to Cain and Abel? Cain kills Abel. And yes. throughout history, from the days of Cain, it's been that this serpent lineage has been here causing wars, ruling yes. after us, telling us what to do, and destroying the true human that God created as Adam and Eve. So that's why it's important if you don't get that foundation, you cannot figure out what revelation means and that's why so many you know churches and so many people have used it and they'd say oh it's just symbolic oh it just uh, you know we'll know one day god doesn't do that in his word he teaches you on every word what the next thing will be for example when you say that someone saw the nakedness of their father 
like in Ham's case, you can go back and look at Lot. And yes. You can see that Lot's children went to bed with him while he was drinking to have, really, it was immoral sex. It was incestuous sex. The same thing happened with uh, Ham when he did that with his, what I believe was either his mother, who was uh, Noah's wife, or either it was absolutely just Noah's wife, but that is exposing the nakedness of your father. People don't want, for some reason, Monique, to deal with these issues. If you don't get down to the nitty-gritty and put it out like it's supposed to be, you can't get the whole full picture and understand that we are living in end times, that we are the generation and we have a man that looks like Jesus Christ who has the pedigree that the Bible tells us he will have. He will have a pedigree of a serpent lineage. And there's only one man that looks like Jesus. He's in the image of Jesus who has the power that's needed to rule the kingdoms of earth. In other words, unless you are a serpent, you cannot rule the kingdoms of earth. When Jesus Christ himself was here on this planet, the serpent, I mean, Satan, he took him up and said, look, hey, you bow down to me, I'll give you the kingdoms of this earth. Yeah. Here is Satan offering the Son of God. And what does the Son of God, Jesus, tell Pilate? My kingdom is not of this earth, because we are in a fallen world. The only thing ruling this fallen world is Satan. Yep. And that's why a lot of people get really confused as to, well, what does all this mean? If, Like, again, if you don't go back and understand the foundation, understand what really went on, understand how serious marriage is, and you can see Satan tearing marriage apart. Yep. You know, it's okay for males to marry males or females to marry females or have sex outside of wed you know, weddings. Go back to the very beginning, right where I'm telling you, and that very first part of Genesis, those male and female, Adam and Eve, were married. No other animal on this planet succumbs to the marriage institution or the laws or the commandments about it. And throughout the entire book of the Bible, it really tells you, don't be a whore. Don't be an adulteress. Yeah. Do not mix. Do not get out of what you're supposed to be right. into. He told his people, his Israelites, who were yep. pure, who came from that lineage, he says, don't mingle with those Canaanites because they are not pure. They are not of the seed that I expect you to stay. And that's why he told Moses and all the guys that were with him, when you come upon those people, go into the promised land, you kill every man, woman, child, and animal yep. because they are mixed. They are not supposed to be here. But people yeah. don't want to address that. They'll say, oh, my goodness, God is a mean God. I'm like, yes, and now these preachers get on TV and they'll preach love thy neighbor and do all this kind of stuff and oh, yeah. this is a wonderful yeah. thing and we're not having any condemnation. I'm going to tell you that same God is ruling today. He, I hate to say it. If I had lived back there and been going through what you call the age of the law, like he had upon his first people, yeah. I probably would have got swallowed up in the ground. I'd have done the same thing that Eve did. Praise the Lord that we live in the age of grace because Jesus Christ came upon the cross of Calvary as a pure-blooded, true person of a lamb that could save us by his, by his blood. That's the reason his blood on the Shroud of Turin is so important, and that's why the divine spark of that blood is why Hitler wanted it cloned. Wow. So it's a lure. And, and the thing about it is Satan has been lured to do what he's done because God said, oh I'm going God. to use the evil raven. I'm going to bring him, and I'm going to let his own evilness kill his own evilness. And at the Battle of Armageddon, those people are going to be just crucified by their very own because us... We're going to be caught away. Uh, we are the brides, uh, the bride of the bridegroom. Jesus will come back like a thief in the night. The first time he comes as a thief in the night, yes. he takes his bride out. 
He leaves the 144,000. He seals them in the forehead because they're pure. They have got to go through the tribulation because they've missed the boat. They they were the first who will be last and the last first. Yeah. So they've got to ride out the, the, the wrath of God and realize the day of the Lord is upon them. But they're sealed in their forehead because they're not going to be confused by this. God is going to allow them to see that the bride has been taken out and that the day of the Lord is upon them. That's why the two witnesses come. That's why they've been setting the table for Elijah for all these years, expecting him to come yes. tell them that the day of the Lord is near. All that is going to play out. But the thing about it, the Antichrist, the, the so-called Messiah that these secret societies have been working so long with their holy grail to bring the blood of a once and future king back to life again, and the person just that's sitting over there waiting to take the throne, his name is Will I Am Arthur. And if Prince Charles had had his way against Diana's wishes, he would have named him Arthur. And that is why Princess Diana never used Will's full name. She called him Will. She didn't even put I Am on it. <gasps> she stood before the American people. She stood before the people in Britain. She stood before the world and she told everybody, I Am was used as a birthing chamber. Her fountain that's built over on, uh, over in England is actually in the shape of an egg in a ah. petri dish being pierced. And what do you do when you do that? You clone something. It's right before our eyes. It's very it's very clear. The the queen is the wealthiest individual on the face of this earth. The only person even close to her is the king of Saudi oh Arabia, and the God. third people are the Vatican. I never, I, I, I knew who you thought it was. That was William. I never, my God, I wrote a whole dissertation. I'm like you, and I start to write, I write a lot, like a 200-page dissertation on just the I am's in the Bible. I never saw Will I am. William. Well, he would have never been named that uh, because he, Charles wanted him named Arthur. Wow. So he is King Arthur. He is King Arthur. And he's the once and future king. He's raised, he was a, he's supposed yeah. to be a king that had died Everybody loves and he's going to be raised back as a child from the Holy Grail. And even the, the prophecies of Nostradamus show the Holy Grail with the, with the little serpent coming out of it from the blood. You know, they get on the History Channel, they start all this stuff, and I'm like, look at the paintings, people. It's telling you the Holy Grail is a snake. The blood's a snake. But they don't, you know, they won't have me back on because I'm too much to tell them the way it really ought to be. The eight-pointed star they show at the top of those things on Nostradamus' drawings. Look yeah. at William. He wears the eight-pointed star everywhere he goes. Even the day he got married, he had a hat on that he took off before he went down the aisle that had an eight-pointed star on it. At the, at the uh, Diamond Jubilee, when he he, he read, he actually was in the parade of the uh, the uh, the colors. He rode a uh, gray horse, and the gray horse even had the eight pointed star on its forehead. So people, uh, you know, oh my God. It's, it's, not a joke. It, it's very real. Um, you can look at my website, and you can see that he's in his image. He has the perfect. I mean, his eyes, his face, his nose, his mouth. And when he put his little beard on back some time ago, he just really helped me out a whole lot, proved that even even more. But I think it was to let the people know. The, 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 let me just say this. The serpent people know it's him. They've been waiting for him. This has all been planned. The serpent lineage has been doing this. It's been the agenda since the Garden of Eden, and that's why my book takes you from the Garden of Eden to the end of time so you can understand that this is not a joke. This is an agenda. It's been set out. God has, tell, God has told us about it in the Bible. He's warned us. He warned his people. He's been warning his people since day one. Stay away from these people. They're rulers. They're killers. They're terrible. He brought the flood to try to get rid of them. They got through the flood because they remanifested the, uh, the DNA, probably from Cain and his mother's lineage. They took recessive de- genes and made them dominant again. That's why we, after the flood, we had the remnant of the giants still going on. So it's, it's, that's the reason the Canaanites were said, Be, stay away from them, don't get around them, kill them. If, if, if God's people had done what God told them to do, we wouldn't have this problem today. But we didn't listen, and we're still not listening. 
because we're still playing the games of doctrines of men and not really understanding the true nature of what's happening. And it's hard to get out there, Monique. And really, when I try to tell the truth about this, people are like so blown away, they'll either think, well, gosh, she's either off or a rocker, or either, yes, she's telling the truth and let's keep her quiet. And your secret societies rule the world, and they don't want anybody to know this, because as long as they can keep us in mass hypnosis, they've got us right where they want us. And the end times are upon us. You can see that the sky, the sun, the moon, the stars, everything's being affected. And I'm going to tell you, not only are the animals dying, people are dying of strange things. People are experiencing strange emotions. There's even a lot of people doing research right now that when we have these solar flares, like we had the tsunami-sized one that we've never had in history, and now this is the warmest record uh, ever uh, uh, for uh, uh, for the heat indexes, if you look at it, there are people who are having strange symptoms, especially dizziness. Start asking people around you, are you feeling dizzy? What days were you dizzy? Go back and look and see if there was any solar flares or sunspots. Were you feeling like fogged? Did you feel just like something wasn't right, like anxious feeling? You'll start talking to people and you'll start seeing that everybody's having these symptoms. And then you've got other things like the plagues. You've got things like you know, the chicken pox are increasing, the whooping cough is increasing, the flu's killing people. I mean, you can just see we're doing just like the, the birds and the fish. And what does the Bible say on the storms? For example, Sandy, the fact that all the ice is melted in Antarctica and, and Greenland and the oceans are rising, the fact that our compasses are not matching the, the runways anymore, that true north has moved at least 40 or 45 degrees that when you look at the moon, it's not in the same place. So that we've got asteroids right. almost hitting us within 24 hours, and we can't even identify. We've never seen them before. We've never had, right. We don't have a name for them. You've got to go back to the Bible. What does it say? These signs are going to start happening at the end of days, and they're going to be like a woman in travail. And what happens in birthing? Those pains get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer until that baby's born. And you can honestly say, since the year 2000, these things have gotten so close that they're coming like bam, 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 bam. Right. And so you, if we don't sit up and take note, we're fooling ourselves. There's also a picture of Prince Will, I am, holding a lamb with a, what's that about, that clothed, that clothed. The clothed husk, it's, a, it's like you do for a goat. What's that symbol? So what, it, what, it, what it really is, you know, if you stop and think, uh, Baphomet is the goat god that all your secret societies worship. It's a goat-headed uh, being. Right. And the intent is, you know, in, the, in biblical scripture it says, I will separate the sheep from the goats. And oh, my that God. Is, it's, it's the same thing as the wheat from the tear. You're separating those out from this field uh, that's, that's the wall. It's a separation between the two. And the problem is, is the, there are, there's a serpent lineage here that's pure serpent that will never ask for forgiveness. If you go back and you look at Cain, Cain never asked for forgiveness. No. You know, he was too worried about getting dying, okay? Judas never went back and said, forgive me. He hung himself. Those kinds of people are true, pure-breaded uh, connection to the serpent. They never asked for forgiveness. The demons, when Christ would run them out of people, they didn't say, oh, forgive us. You know, just don't kill us, or let us go, or, or whatever. It was It was like they knew who he was, but they didn't want to honor him or obey him. That's the same thing Satan did with God. He was an original uh, cherub. He was second in command. And, you know, he wanted to be like God, so he wasn't going to ever give God any praise or ask for forgiveness, because he can at this point. He's in a fallen state. So you've got a group of individuals here with us that are in a fallen state. So they're, all here, they're here to do is party, use us, have a good time, and have all the money. And if you look at them, the people who run the world are all connected. They're all in a lineage. They all have, you know, they're either their first cousin by cousin by cousin. I mean, you can go back and look at Hillary Clinton and Obama. All these people are all connected to one another. They're kin to each other. Yet the commoner, like you and I, if we want to run for one of those organizations and, and, and become president of the United States, laugh. You'll never get there. You can't get there. It's never been. It's always been the blue, and the blue bloods run everything. So if you're even elected into these these particular organizations, you have to either go through the Skull and Bone Society or be a part of the uh, um, uh, 
Council of Foreign Affairs or some of that kind of stuff, but you've got to be born out of a blue blood family. And when people say, oh, well, oh, well William married a commoner. <laughs> Kate's not a commoner, but they want you to believe that. It's no different than Diana was not a commoner, but yet they wanted you to believe that. All this stuff is set up. It's all controlled. It's a breeding program, and it's, it keeps them over God's true people here. And until Jesus Christ comes back at the day of the Lord, following the great wrath of God, you know, and bringing about the battle of Armageddon, only will that return us to what is the new Jerusalem, which, which he will rule from. If he doesn't do that, and, and before all this happens, we're going to have to suffer. Because right now, you can look at this country, and everybody is not, I mean, Christianity is getting to be a non-existent, a true Christian. There's right. a difference between yeah. somebody who says, I'm a Christian, and yeah. somebody who really is a Christian. Because the Bible specifically says, the yeah. pathway is very small, and for those who might say, well, Christ, I cast out you know, demons in your name, he's going to turn around and say, I knew you not. Because if you don't address sin in your life, if you're not convicted, if you think that God is a good God and he's just going to forgive you for the fun of it, think again. The Bible tells you you have to be true in your mindset when you ask for forgiveness of something. If you don't, your sin's not forgiven. God knows when you have a true heart. He created us. We give off, every one of us gives off a harmonic vibration through our individualized DNA, which can be tracked by satellite because we're all beaming off a little bit of a vibration that is able to be picked up. We're all uniquely different. So if we can do that as a satellite, our creator knows exactly the number of hairs on our head and every thought we've ever thought. So if you say to him, oh, God, I'm so sorry I did so-and-so, and and then turn around and do it again, don't think he doesn't know that. (laughs) The spiritual world exists all around us, and that's something people don't want to, you know, hear. When I do these shows, especially on paranormal, they always want to know about the ghost, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to show you the ghost. I'm going to prove you they're here. The problem is people want to look for them, but when you find them and show them to them, they're like, oh, my gosh, I I didn't really want to know that. I don't want to know something's watching me 24-7. I'm telling you. No, there's no ghosts. Are there guests, ghosts? Are there ghosts? The what now? Are there ghosts? Yes, and and the thing about it is the Holy no. Spirit is a ghost. It's a Holy Ghost. It's a connection that actually goes into God. There is a connection. There is a connection to the fact that you've got the serpent lineage when they die. They don't have a soul like you and I. They become demonic beings on this right. earth. Right. They're very right. real. They obsess and possess people. It's a it's a real thing. And God, when Jesus was here, that was the first thing he did was cast these things out of people. And they yep. turned around and talked to God, or Jesus, and Jesus talked back to them. So it's not that yep. they're not real and that they went running into the, to the swine so they can go into the pigs, they can go into animals. That's why when when God, when Jesus, I mean, when God told Moses to kill those Canaanites, to kill the animals. Yeah. Because when the people, the Canaanite people who were the, you know, true lineage, yep. that they had that true lineage, they became demonic. They stayed upon this earth. And I, I'll be honest with you, the people in places like Africa, the Philippines, where they have been aware of this kind of stuff, you know, they see this stuff all the time. America, for some reason, we've got blinders on, and we think, you know, somebody see, needs to see a psychiatrist and let them take more medicine, which opens up the pineal gland that much more for Satan to infiltrate. Yep. I mean, it's, it's like a, a money scheme. And once you understand the conspiracy behind that, where people will say, well, well, Joy, you're talking conspiracy. No, we're living in a conspiracy, and people are playing this game with us. And when we wake up and we take the blinders off, it's like, man, you see all these red flags. And they're all right after your soul. They want to send us to hell so bad and have to make us spend eternity with them. Because they know they're fallen. They don't ever have a chance. They know where they're going to spend forever. And they hate us so much, they'll do whatever they can to force us to become nothing but a sinful soul in hell forever. And that's, it's fine for them because they're going to be torturing us if we, get up to, if we end up there. It's a terrible thought. I mean, and I, I think if, there, you know, if I could just really get out there and go, people, wake up. Take a moment. Read your Bible. And if you don't want to read the Bible, read my book. And let me try to tell you what to look for so that you're not just stupid blind because unfortunately the Bible says my people suffer for lack of knowledge and that's really where we are today we're too busy playing church and not believing it 
and understanding it. Oh, and my God. It, and finding it and knocking, and the door shall be open. People will say, well, I don't want to read the King James Version. It's just too hard. I'm like, how many times have you read it? I guarantee they even read the book. God gave us one book, and that's the book we ought to be reading. And we better be reading it and understanding it. And the more you read it, the more God opens well, up. He uh, says, yeah. knock. Keep knocking. The more you knock, the more you're going to understand. The more you read, the more you understand. And I will tell you, my life has been that way. The more I read, the more I understand. He sure. will open that door to you if you truly want it. If you don't want it, the door is not going to open, and you won't understand it. you got to really, really, really want it. And you can't fake him out. You even can't fake Satan out because he can tell your vibrational uh, uh, DNA as well. That's why he's so bad with us because he, can, he knows our Achilles heel. And that's why he goes after each one of us individually. Yours may be that you have, you know, you want to shop. Somebody else may be you want to eat. Somebody else you may be, you, you know, you get upset every time your child gets sick. He's going to use those things to just eke you to death to the point if he can just get you to just say, well, God, blame it on God. He tried to do that with Job. That's why the book of Job is so important in the Bible. Amen. It teaches us. That yep. he is, that Satan is real, and he has real powers, yep. and he goes after everything you love to try to destroy your soul. Wow! Wow! God, Joy. So, is there is there a rapture? The I mean, rapture I'm, is actually I'm, something that's called caught away. It's a catching away. It is like the thief in the night. Uh, uh, ra- the, ro- the actual word rapture is, is not really uh, in, let's say, the Bible as such. It's a catching away. It's the understanding that you are the bride of Christ. That's why it's so important to understand about Christians and, and why we were grafted in after the true Israelites and stuff kind of fell away and didn't, excuse me, didn't follow the, 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 the laws of God as he had established them and, and really gave us the opportunity as Gentiles and then, of course, Jews that are Messianic Jews that would believe that we were grafted in as God's children. Um, but we are the bride, and the bride is actually going to be the one that's going to pave the way for the remnant, that 144,000 of really true, true Hebrews and Israelites that are left here to understand that God, in fact, is who he said he was, and he had died on the cross, and that he has come again, and that they missed the boat, kind of to say, and realize that the day of the Lord, and the day of the Lord, of course, follows the 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 great wrath, and that's why they have to go through that end-time period. Just as Noah went through the end-time period sealed in the ark, they're going to be sealed in their foreheads so that they don't fall victim, just like Noah didn't fall victim to the flood. Wow. So will we, so we'll be taken out before the real, real bad... What we will about- be taken out, I believe, after the Antichrist, you know, after, after uh, William probably stands up some way, and he's going to prove that he has the rights to, to really rule the world. His, his pedigree gives him that right. Yes, he yeah, and also, everybody loves you know, him. Everybody just loves him. Oh, yeah, and, and they're going to they're gonna push him more on the world stage. And, and he's fulfilling the role of, um, of the true, what you call, Gnostic Jesus. The, he fulfills the role of the, what we saw in the Da Vinci Code. He fulfills the role of the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, the Gospel of Philip, in which Jesus was married. And you just recently had the uh, Coptic uh, release of, of uh, Papyrus uh, that specifically said that Jesus said, my wife, and that she was my disciple. So, I mean, we're, we're, being, we're being groomed to understand why Jesus is now married and why Jesus' wife is now trying to have a child because to be a part of the bloodline and prove there was a Merovingian bloodline for which the, the royals say that they descend directly from, they've got to prove that Jesus, in fact, was married. Oh, my God. So he's fallen. He's fallen suit for what you call the New Age Jesus. You're an, you are amazing. You guys, you got you we only got a, about a minute left. You've got to go to her site, drjoy.com. It's d r j o y e 60seconds.com. I I mean it. Um get her music. It's I cry when I listen to it all the time. Oh my god. I can't believe this. What happens if well, it's not my hope her- that you know if people don't want to read the book that they might listen to my music and get a con- you know some understanding of how close we are to the end of days yeah, and how important it is for you to make the right decision right now and and straighten your life up so when those 
when that thief of the knife comes and that door closes, it's gone. It's not going to be like Left Behind series. You're going to get to fight the Antichrist. You can't win against the Antichrist. That's why the 144,000 have to be sealed by God. I better straighten up. I got yeah, you better straighten up, and when he shows up, you go with him, and you don't get lit. Ten like the seconds. Virgin didn't have the lamps lit with the oil. I got to straighten up. I got to pray more. Okay, Joy, we're out of time. God bless you. Enjoyed it so much. God. Looking forward to being back on your show again later. Yeah, I'll invite you soon. I love you. Guys, take care. God bless. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight, Radio Preacher Man Show. See you tomorrow. Love you all. Need anything, give me a holler. M-O-N-I-Q-U-E-B-A-U-G-U-S at Hotmail.com. Love you guys. Bye-bye.